right now, you probably have friends that you think are your buddies and people that you uh, sit next to in church and even family members that you really think are in your corner and they're really not. Listen, this is the last hour. And John is writing here, he says, this is the last hour. And I'm writing you, little children, because I want to warn you how to recognize those frauds, your counterfeit friends, those that are in your circle, but they're not really with you. And he's going to show you exactly how you can recognize it in the last hour. Okay, what I did here is what's called the mechanical layout. It's a rewriting of the scripture in such a way that you can see its structural design and to see the argument that John is using in order to bring about his point, which is to warn true believers that among them are a lot of tares, people that are not really saved. They're pretending they're saved. They're pretending they're your friends. They're pretending they're in your corner, but they're really not. In fact, he labels them the Antichrist. Okay? They stand against God. You don't see it, but you, he's going to show you how you can recognize it. Okay? So, I'm going to read this passage to you. I'm going to show you how to do this. By the way, for those of you that are diligent Bible students, this is typically what you do with a passage of Scripture in its context before you put it in what's called a homiletical outline or devotional outline. In other words, how to put it in a way that you can present it, that people could understand it in an expositional style with application. This is the first step. In this step, we can make some observations and that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. Let me, let me read this to you so you can find out who are your real friends, true spiritual friends, Christian friends, and who are the Antichrist. And he writes this, Dear children, he's writing that and, and it has nothing to do with little kids. He's writing that because that's his affectionate way of communicating. Remember John was in the inner circle with Jesus and he was a very affectionate person, wrote the book of love and all that stuff. So, he knows a lot about fellowship, and that's what he wants to do. He's warning the believers some of the pitfalls that they could fall into where they would lose fellowship with God. He already says, if you want to have fellowship with God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and with other spiritual-minded people, you've got to walk in light. You've got to walk in step with God. You've got to walk in truth. You've got to walk in the Word. You cannot be a friend of the world, okay? He's talking about some of the pitfalls, and here's another one. It's the last hour. People, you know you're in the last hour. And the last hour began when Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to heaven. We have been in the last hour since then. We're just a little closer to the end of that last hour. Okay, and the rapture is about to come. And when that is about to happen, this, uh, what he's talking about, begins to increase as we're seeing it on TV and in churches and in your family and your friends everywhere. Okay, let me read it so I can show you how, and, you, and, and you'll be amazed. By the way, let me, let me also share this too. You will be surprised how many passages of Scripture get taken out of their grammatical context, historical context, and cultural context because people don't pay attention to the structure of the passage. Okay, I know one particular passage in Hebrews where people claim they can lose their salvation because of the wording of it. Okay, but I'm going to show you how to recognize that right now. Okay, dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. They're coming and they have come. 
Now, this is how we know. This is how, this is how we know that it is the last hour. This is how we know. Not doubt, not imagine, not question, but no. Look, look, people, listen to me. This is how you're going to know. Okay? So now I'm going to break this down, and I'm going to show you how you can know. And he says this. They went out from us. I want you to pay attention as we go through these few verses to the change from the third person to the second person to the first person. Okay? They, them, you. They, the Antichrist, okay? They, the Antichrist, them also, the Antichrist, from us to us, with us to us, the second person, those are the apostles, okay? But you, who he's writing to, the true believers. So I want you to pay attention to that, because if you don't, you're going to take and misinterpret this passage. Okay, they went out from us. He, he didn't say they went out from you. Apparently, these were people that were there originally among the apostles, among a lot of the disciples. Okay, and John is saying they went out from us, not from you but from us um, in that early gathering as the church was started. They went out from us, but, and that's what's called a contrast connective. In fact, the ones I've done in blue here are different connectives. They tell you they're indicators of something that's coming, but is what's called a contrast connective. Four is what's called a purpose connective, and then we have two more buts, okay? So you got three but contrast connectives here, okay? But, you, for, they, okay? So let me, let me do this again. This is how it is. This, uh, they went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For, purpose connective, if they, 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 had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. You couldn't be any clear here. Why did they leave? Because they didn't like what was being said. You start preaching the truth, you start telling people the truth instead of lying to them, you start uh, communicating the gospel the way it's written in the scriptures and the people that are false they don't like that they'll leave now, they had a lot of Gnostics in that day so they believed that Jesus could not possibly have been God because he was a man and they believed that in, in Gnosticism that the material is evil that's why a lot of Catholics especially the priests they wear a clerical collar because they don't believe that pleasure is is they believe all pleasure is evil. And so that's why they take a vow of celibacy. Okay, so you need to understand that's where a lot of that Gnosticism, a lot of Catholicism, paganism, a lot of that is rooted in false doctrine that came from the Antichrist. They're lies. Okay? And he says that he says they went out from us, they did not really belong to us, for they had, for if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. They didn't. What happened in Galatians? And that's the same thing. Peter had to go tell them because these Judaizers had gotten in there and they started telling, hey, all these Gentiles that were getting saved, yeah, you can be saved, but you got to be circumcised. They were starting to add to the gospel that God never intended. And then Paul had to really get on them, and he did too. He said, who, who cut in on you? You know, if, if you believe that, why don't you go ahead and emasculate yourself? You know, then you really can be sure that you're safe. 
which is what's happening in America today, isn't it? Aren't most men becoming emasculated? Huh? They don't have any, uh, in Spanish, they say huevos or balls. <laughs> They've been emasculated by feminist movement, by the woke movement, by lies, basically. Uh, I saw a guy like that today, you know, and I, it was a strange, strange look to see this guy carrying a baby in a little sack in front of him and the mother walking next to him, you know, and, and it, the, the roles are reverse, you know. Now, there's nothing wrong with dad carrying a child once in a while, but carrying it in this thing like that, yeah, and he had his hair in a bow back there like that. And I said, this guy is totally emasculated, you know, because they fall into the world trend. And that's what I talked about in the last passage is that the, the world, the cosmos system that's headed up by Satan, and that's what he wants to do. He forms and creates certain trends and makes them popular with music, with cultural, uh, you know, ideologies and different things that people fall into. They think it's cool especially young people, they don't realize what they're doing. Or you see these young uh, thugs, they wear their jeans past below their rear end. And where do you think that came from? You know, and they tend to borrow things of the worst sort from the worst kind of people. That came from prison. Those were guys that were wearing their shorts long to show that they were available for homosexual activities. And now you got all these young people running around with their pants way down, thinking they're cool. Little do they realize they're signifying and giving out a single that they're available. You know, it's disgusting. But that's what happens when you when you begin to fall into lies. And he warned he warned the believers, say, don't follow the world. If you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. Okay, so let's go. Let's continue. If they had belonged to us, what would they do? They would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. How can you tell if they separate themselves from you when you speak the truth in love? When your pastor speaks the truth in love and people get up and leave, and they want to throw them out and bring somebody else more that will tickle their ears, then you know that you're among a bunch of antichrists. You see a lot of these antichrists on mega television and all that, and you wonder how in the world could so many people give them so much money? Because they're antichrists too. They believe a lie that if you give, you're going to get. They had a picture the other day of Joel Osteen you know, he had a car that was worth about $600,000. And other mega preachers that had these big planes. Could you imagine me buying something like that? I couldn't do it. My spiritual integrity would just would not allow me to do something like that. You know, God forbid that I do that while you have such a need in the church and people that are going hungry and kids that don't have families and you know, it's it, it just not possible. There's countries where they don't have Bibles, they need translation work, missionaries need funding. There's so many great things you can do if you're a good steward of your finances. If you're a poor steward and you're a greedy person, then you're going to give to get. Well, if I give God $10, he's obligated to give me back 100 No, he's not. He's, nowhere in the Bible does it say that. And they will come at you, sow seeds, and then you're going to get a return. Now, the idea in, in, in the Bible is when you give, it's sacrificially. Like, when God gave his son, he didn't expect to get a return. Okay? He gave his son out of love. Greater love is no man than he lays down his life for his friend. That's a true friend. So, all these antichrists, you see, they went out. They did not really belong. If they had belonged, they would have remained but their going showed that none of them belong. So how can you tell? If they leave. It's that simple. If they leave. If you, have, you, you bring out the Bible and you want to have a discussion at your, at your family outing and they start to separate themselves, so then you know. Okay? 
Antichrists are people basically that have bought a lie concerning the gospel and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now, he doesn't leave them with that. He's going to go on, and he's going to say something really encouraging. But you, now he goes from the first person. He went from the third person to the second person, and now he's going to the first person. Pay attention to that, especially when you're reading the book of Hebrews. Okay, it's really important. Well, let me read this to you. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, the Holy Spirit. And all of you, first person, know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it and because no lie comes from the truth. Every lie that is being promoted is from the Antichrist, from Satan and his followers and his messengers. Okay? Who is the liar? It is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. That's what they were doing in Gnosticism. Okay? Um, Jehovah Witness believe that. They don't believe that Jesus is God. Mormons have a faulty idea. Most cults believe that. Okay? Uh, Buddhists, Islam. Okay? Uh, even Judaism. They don't believe that Jesus is the Christ. They believe he was a good teacher. They're the Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? The man who denies that Jesus, such a man, is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. If you have one, you have the other. Okay? See that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. So he's warning them. If it does, you will remain in the Son and then in the Father. Now, be careful here. Don't start thinking he's talking about salvation. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about being in fellowship. Your son and daughter, if they disobey you and they fall out of fellowship, they still remain your children. And he says, dear children, he's writing to them. He says, remain and you're going to stay in fellowship. That's the whole book of John, the first John is talking about. He says, he says, see that what you've heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he promised us, eternal life. Man, that's great. That's good news. That's the good news of the Bible. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. He's warning them. And, and Christians get led astray all the time. Okay? As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. Now, there, there's where another people take it. Oh, 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 we don't need Bible teachers. We don't need a church. We don't need the gift of teaching. He says, no one needs to teach you. No, he's talking about fellowship. Okay, the Antichrist. Okay, and he's writing them. If, he, if they didn't know anyone to teach him, why is he writing Okay, so keep it in its proper context. Of course you need people to help you, or he wouldn't have given the gift of teaching. He wouldn't have written the scriptures. Okay, he wouldn't have given you parents that can pass down wisdom to you, whether you accept it or not. Kids, are you listening? Okay, I'm writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you. As for you, again, first person, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But, as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you to remain in him. Okay. True disciples remain in truth. The Antichrist, they, them, and those uh, would remain, but their going showed that none of them belong to us, they're not real, they're counterfeit. The things they say to you and me and to everybody else are rooted in lies. God bless you.